Hi, everybody. So raise those hands, wave goodbye. Say goodbye. And we're about to go behind the curtain. Take a second. This is going to be fun. This is going to be fun. You couldn't be able to do it with a car driver. This is Gerald. Everybody say hi, Gerald. Hi, Gerald. Yeah, and now, um, you may be familiar with the guy that I'm about to introduce if you've watched Saturday Night Live or The Tonight Show with Jimmy Fallon! Jimmy Fallon! It is... Jimmy Fallon! Welcome to the Universal Studio. Jimmy Fallon! I'm Jimmy Fallon. I'll be making sure you get through this experience. One piece. You've got the very best guy. Oh, the incredible Donald. And the greatest drive. The fantastic Gerald. They're the best. I love it. Even though the incredible Donald owes me five bucks. Why does his face crush it and look at Mr. Beast for some reason? A few safety rules. Huh? Yeah, everybody, we do have a few safety Crazy. rules to go over. First, if you need assistance or if you have a medical emergency right, or if you bump. drop something of value off the side uh -oh. of the tram, or if you have any sound or video issues, please reach up and grab that red e-port that runs along the center of the tram ceiling, and I will be back to assist you as soon as it's safe for me to do so. Otherwise, during the entire tour, please stay seated. <laughs> to keep your arms and legs inside the vehicle at all times. Remember to use the red cord above your head if you need assistance. The studio tour is private property. And if at any time during the tour you drop your phone or you just can't wait to use the restroom, pull that red cord and remain seated. And please, no smoking of any kind during the tour. Be prepared. Our tour today features loud noises, sudden movements, air effects, and many water effects. You'll want to have your cameras out for great photo opportunities, but Keep an eye on them. You don't want them to get wet. And finally, for your safety and the safety of those around you, please do not use selfie sticks while you're on board. And that's about it for a safety. <laughs> <laughs> no, I, I, I think they mean like, well, like that, like yeah. this. But now this is like a... It's made of We're good. We break the rules. This is what we call it POV stick. From the very yeah. first game you saw on the lot back in 1915. We paid extra to use this. To some of your more current kits. And Universal is a city. Yep, we're Ooh. a real city. And like any Breakfast real city, club? we're right over here. Up That's a tiny bit. Side, you can see That's a bit of a Land before station. time. Ooh. This is station number 51. Oh, it's stinky. We got another oh designation, 51, from a TV a series station, that came right up right here on the Universal lot back in the 1970s. <laughs> and that TV series is called Emergency. As we head on down the hill, we're coming into... I've never seen Schindler's List, but I've seen Schindler's Fist. The studio is divided into two major areas, front lot and back lot. The front lot is the nerve center of Universal. It's where we have many of our sound stages, I love the great offices, and it's also where you find our free and post-production facilities. Over here, off to the left side, is one of our largest sound stages. They do have a large single sound stage, and that sound stage number 12. 12 has been used for some of the biggest movies in Universal history. If you take a look, that's where we built Frankenstein's laboratory back in 1931, also Dracula's Castle. It's where we built the mansion for Scarface. Also, we shot that Top Tower sequence from Back to the Future inside stage 12. It held the visitor center for Jurassic Park. Who built for Dr. Seuss's How the Grinch Stole Christmas, even a resort for Kevin's Retreat? Here in the front lot, we have sound stage number one, home to the Kelly Clarkson Show. And if you look over there, off to the left, you can see stages 18, 19, and 20, currently being used for the television series Bel Air. Bel Air is a continuation of the uh, television series The Friends. Fresh Prince of Bel Air. And then if you look off to the left, you'll see stages 16 and 17. They have been the home for the television series Superstore, starring America Ferrara and Ben Feldman. That those two sound stages help the main set for the Cloud Nine Superstore. Currently, 16 and 17 are being used for the second season of the television series Axe. And then over there, off to the left, if you look quickly, you'll see a big white and gray building. That is the Carl Lemley Building. It's named when after the founder Carl, Carl Lemley. Oh, costumes! In that building, on the top two floors, you will find the home of Universal. Pictures. So if you're in a movie theater and you see that big globe come up on the screen, the NYPD with the Universal man. written across it comes from that big building right behind us. Also, over there, off to the left, you see all those trailers, the star wagons. Those are dressing trailers for the cast members of the TV series Max, which not only films over there in 16 and 17, but right here in stage number 21. You can see the 
the doors to the second stage are open, and you can see a little bit of early construction for set for the TV series. I don't know what that is. The same sound stage that Ron Haggard used for Apollo 13, that's where we built Mission Control. It was used for the Mindy Project, starring Mindy Kaling, and it was also the home of the Palace of Zenobia for Princess Diaries 2, Royal Engagement. Coming up over here, off to the front hand side, we have stages 41 and 42, currently being used for the TV series Never Have I Ever, and then coming up after 41 and 42, we have 43 and 44, home to the television series Mr. Mayor, starring Ted Danson. Ted Danson is no stranger to the Universal Lab. He's been here a oh, lot. Oh, Mitch has made it. CSI. Uh, you Thank you. The Toasting you with a very dirty martini. Ted is toasting you because he just landed his own television series streaming on the Peacock Network. What is that? Ted is standing outside of some of our production bungalows. At one time, the bungalows over there were the um, dressing rooms for big stars like James Stewart, um, John Wayne, Forrest Day, Rocky Hudson. Uh, they all had their own bungalows here. But nowadays, stars have their dressing rooms housed in motorhomes and trailers. So it's kind of funny because like, we're they new media trying to understand to the all back these the around the location, anywhere the star goes. So all of these product, all of these bungalows and our production offices for people like Wayne, The Rock Johnson, whose office is right over here, up to the left-hand side. You're going to say hello? And then coming <laughs> up, you'll see... I'm out. I'm, I'm getting out here. Distance, <laughs> a sign that has an MP on it. That's Mark Platt Productions. Mark Platt, producer Mario. of the stage show Wicked, oh, sorry, and soon-to-be okay. film version of Wicked, also Dear Evan Hansen. We have Elizabeth Banks Production Officer, Brownstone Productions, and then right beside that, we have Bungalow 5195 with the... Um, Profile of Alfred Hitchcock because that was Mr. Hitchcock's office when he was making movies and TV shows here at Universal. Also on the left side, two of our newer set of stages, 22 and 23. 22 recently was the home of the last season of the television series, Will and Grace, which was recorded in front of a live audience right over there in stage Whoa. 22. The, build, the building in front of it is actually attached to those two sound stages, those are post-production offices, where we can go ahead and start doing the editing for whatever is taking place inside those two sound stages. Right now, stages 22 and 23 being used for the television series Keenan, starring Keenan Thompson, but they were combined. The two stages were opened up, the wall between them disappeared, and that's where they did World of Dance, the dance competition show, and they were also open for America's Got yeah. Talent. What? Now, we're moving from the front lot into the back lot. We are kind of crossing over the border here that separates the two. Front lot, basically the um, business center, and it's where we have many of our sound stages and post-production facilities. But out here on the back lot, we have mostly big outdoor sets. These sets are massive. If you look over here off to the left, you can get a preview of what's coming up. This is called our metropolitan area. The metropolitan area is made up of giant sets that look like city streets, and we can dress them up to look like any city in the entire world. Just think about it. Have you ever seen a movie called Austin Bowers, The Spy Who Shagged Me? You thought that you were in London, but you were actually out here on these back lot sets. In the movie Transformers, we made you believe that these back lot sets were the city of Los Angeles. Yes, we did do some establishing shots downtown, but then we did most, most of the um, special effects shots right here. Wow. Wait, I thought the they amazing Spider-Man <laughs> filmed out on these streets. Spider-Man 2? Spider-Man. Made you believe that this was New York City. It's really easy I to do. I love that. Um, to believe you're in. So if we want you to believe that we're in London, we might put one of those beautiful red phone booths out there. We'll also put license plates 
from England to pump up vehicles to make sure the vehicles can match the location. Any signage that we would put out there on the um, street is freestanding. The bases are painted to look like the, um, the concrete, matching the paint exactly to the concrete sidewalks. And um, then we'll go ahead and paint all of the, um, the curbing. So over in England, they use different colored paints than what we do here in the U.S. That's why any time that we paint those curbs with stripes on the street after the production is gone, we have to bring in the power washers and get rid of them. Wow. So take a look at these sets as we pass on by. They look like they're made out of substantial materials like brick and stone, but they're actually facades, just the front of the yeah. buildings. And what appears to be brick and stone, those are actually plastic panels that have been formed to look like brick and stone and then they're painted and put onto the, uh, the plywood frames. But now we're going to leave that big city area and we're heading to a remote island. The island that we're going to is called Skull Island. Oh! Whoa, yes. In 2005, we took you to Skull Island to meet no, King, King Kong. Kong. Oh. And here's the director of the movie. Oh, I'm sorry. So Why does he care about me? Idiot. Oh, chat, you might F in here. We F in here last time. If we F chat, um, just pray for us. We might F. Oh, really? Chat, I got your glasses. Oh yeah, I told them that. I shaped the exotic to the lost island, you encountered monsters and creatures from you know prehistoric times. It's got a scary moment of us inviting me back to Skull Island, and it's great to have you along for the ride. Now we have created this 3D immersive experience, so you're going to have to have your glasses ready. Don't put them on yet. Just have them in your hand because we're about to return to Sky. We really put a lot of thought into the character and personality of Kong, and he's so much more than the monster. In fact, he's not the monster. You know, he is an incredibly majestic, ancient creature. He's a force of nature. He's old, he's wise, he's proud, he's fierce, and obviously he has a heart. As my goal. <laughs> the most important feature with Kong are his eyes. Kong's eyes are wonderfully expressive. They're, they're, they're full of emotion. His eyes are Did you get white from Kong? No. Yeah. 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 He's had um, what? all the stuff of encounters uh, with his foes, the T-Rexes and the various dinosaurs on Skull Island. So Spoiler! Beaten up, scarred, yeah, what the fuck, Peter? chewed up, <laughs> spat out by these dinosaurs at various times, and he, he wears the scars of a lot of ancient battles. Oh, wait, so he's supposed to be called as dinosaurs? Yeah. yeah I All right, swear, John. It's gonna be scary, I think. No, he's not supposed to be as old as the dinosaurs. You know what happens tonight? Okay, everybody, and welcome to Skull Island.
that was insane. I can't. I don't know if they can tell how much they just shook. Okay, everybody, and you want to hold on to your 3D glasses. You are going to need those a little bit later on during the tour. King Kong 360 3D. That's actually cool, though. The effects were actually so immersive. We need a special effects for a feature film, King Kong, as well as films like Avatar, The Lord of the Rings trilogy. Here I was thinking like there's no way this thing goes super fast. I didn't, I didn't forget your glasses. The screens that you use were 40 feet tall and 180 feet tall. It's where the audience is in the middle of the environment. They're looking in all directions and they're coming like, at them. They're, uh, they're literally uh, describing uh, what we just did. Yeah. The audience is doing this, these clips. <laughs> Okay, bro, we just, we just went through that. You have to take it account of Also, one of the things about this ride, I like the movies that we're used to working on, there's no cuts. Because one long shot in this tram that's driving along through Skull Island is where the camera's from. This ring represents the where the screen is 10 meters away. We're really creating about 50 minutes of a feature film. That amount of visual information, that number of pixels, and presenting them to the audience since you have the ride. Okay. Ooh. Now, you remember seeing the T-Rex when we were inside, right? She pulled yeah. a section yeah. of the tram car onto the tracks. Well, the section of the tram car that she pulled off is called a picture car. A picture car is actually any vehicle that's used in front of the cameras. And get your cameras ready because coming up <gasps> over here off to the no, left hand exciting. side, you'll see picture cars that you may recognize oh. from films and TV shows. The first one is Kit, the, com the talking car from the <gasps> television oh, series shit. Night Rider. <laughs> and then next to Kit, we have one of the yeah, nice Ferraris. Take a good look at that, folks. It's oh, not oh, 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 is a stunt car. It's made out of plastic. Bro, so much oh, pussy! We have some futuristic vehicles. So much the, the, the amount of pussy here is and unfathomable. And Stone Age vehicles from the movie The Flintstones. But we certainly can't talk about cars at Universal without bringing up Fast and Furious. There you see a couple of those from the second film, Fast and Furious. Also, the driver's fear from the film Jurassic World. And notice... There is no spear on the gyrosphere. Yeah, no, we didn't break that glass ball. It just never existed. It was put in using the magic of computer-generated imagery. Don't lift the veil like this, Donald. I bought the wrong car. I didn't. I didn't want to help. <laughs> and speaking of Jurassic World, oh, um, no. it all began in 1993 with a little film called Jurassic Park. When Jurassic Park was released, it was one of the biggest openings ever for a motion picture. And now, coming up, we have some of the props from the first three Ooh. Jurassic Park films. You guys watch the last one? So, first up, over here off to the left side, we have a cage from the second film, Lost World Jurassic Park, that state, and that is where the Stegosaurus was built captive. Off to the right is a large from the film Jurassic Park 3. And then over here, off to the left, that portable laboratory was seen in the, in the movie The Lost World Jurassic Park. Here you see it being pushed off the side of a cliff by a very angry Tyrannosaurus Rex. By the way, the, the cliff that you... Oh no! What? Oh! Watch out, folks! We've got huge coming up. Yes. Oh no! They spit toxic fluid into your eyes to blind you. Don't worry. The toxic fluid that Allosaurus is spitting in is nothing more than Dude, Los Angeles. Donald made me scared. Donald's a good actor. Oh, look. Yeah, I say the same That's thing. a big ass diamond. And if you look over here off to the left, you can see what appears to be tree stumps out there. Those are from the Jurassic Park movies. You see, whenever we filmed the mechanical dinosaurs, we had to film inside sound stages and recreate the jungles inside sound stages. So those trees that you saw over there, they made out of sculpted foam and fiberglass. Wow. Even the moss is fake. It's nothing more than sawdust, glue, and 
green paint. Okay, well, well, every time we turn a corner out here on the back lot, we could be in a different section of the world. Right now, we turn a corner and suddenly we are in old Mexico. Oh, this is Here in old Mexico, we're going to give you a weather effects demonstration. Uh -oh. If we want to have it rain here on the back lot, we don't wait for Mother Nature to come into play. We just go ahead and create it. The thunder is pre-recorded. The lightning is straight light. But then we have to make it rain. So if you look above the set, you'll see some sprinkler heads. The sprinkler heads are pointed upward, so the water will first shoot up, then it falls down like natural rain. Now it is starting to get dark out there. The only way that you can see the raindrops is if the lightning is hitting them. And that's how we do create rain for the camera. Look, look, Even look, though look, the raindrops are out there, the camera cannot see them. Water is transparent. So how do we do that on creative lighting? bouncing off those raindrops so that the camera can actually see it. In order to do that, we have to make those raindrops really, really big. So we drill the holes in those sprinkler heads much larger than they would normally be. That oh. way, the water can go. Oh, oh, shit! Really, really if we get too much rain, we're going to get run off. And look at this. We got ourselves a frost spot. If you look at your screens, you can see how that effect is used in the movie, Big Fat Liar. Rob Schneider is a poster! <laughs> the set that we're in is called Old Mexico. Old Mexico we've seen it in Three Amigos, we've seen it in Nacho Libre. You've seen it as a Peruvian Nacho village Libre, in the film Indiana Jones. Because Kingdom of the Crystal Skull in the television series Community and also the TV series the Mentalist. But now, we're crossing over the border that separates Old Mexico from the Old West. Yeah, here we are in Six Points, Texas. Off Texas. to the right, you can see a livery stable. Yeah, that yeah. is a real livery stable. It's where we board the horses when they have to be working here at Universal. They've got their own little hotel right here in Six Points. Six Points got its name from the six roads that converge right here in the center section of town. Now, things are pretty quiet right now. But if you think back a couple of years to the movie Once Upon a Time in Hollywood, starring Leonardo DiCaprio and Brad Pitt, yeah, this was the Western town that they used as a set for a television series. The way we make it look like a Western town, obviously the buildings look like they're a little bit old and, and they're built in the Western style, but the roadways are all asphalt. We have to bring in truckloads of dirt and sand, cover up all of that asphalt wow. and sand. That, bring in a few hitching posts for the horses, like a maybe a watering trough, like a couple yeah. of bales of hay, a stagecoach, and all of a sudden you got yourself a western town. This was also the Australian outback in a scene from the movie Saving Mr. Banks, the um, story of Walt Disney and his relationship with Pamela Travers during the filming of uh, Mary Poppins. Our western town has been um, the site of television shows such as Wagon Train and The Virginian, and also an episode of the television series Murder, She Wrote, which starred Angela Lansbury. If you look straight ahead, everybody, Take notes, you'll Chad. see a body of People water. Cheat. This body of water is called Park Lake. But Park Lake served as the entire Pacific Ocean for the television series McHale's Navy. It huh. became Central Park Lake in the musical film Sweet Charity. This was the island of Bora Bora in the television series Tales of the Gold Monkey. This was also the Amazon River in a movie called Creature from the Black Lagoon. It served as Gilligan's Island for the um, made-for-television movie The Harlem Globetrotters on Gilligan's Island. That's crazy. Uh, yeah, it also I've served as the that. Mississippi River in a movie yeah. called The Mississippi Gambler. And it was the Mississippi River again in a television series called Riverboat. <laughs> That is a TV series called Riverboat. Okay, everybody, and our tour is now approximately at the halfway point, so I just want to remind everybody to please stay seated during the entire night. The studio is private property, and if you drop your phone and just can't wait to use the restroom, pull the red cord to get my attention. I'll be back to assist you. But do remain seated at all times, and please keep your masks up over your nose and mouth at all times.
We are about to enter stage number 50. We have a special, um, we have a special treat for you, everybody. Stage number 50 is what we call a special effects stage. There are two types of special effects. We have visual effects like King Kong. Those are created using computer generated imagery. Right then there are what we call practical effects. Oh, yeah. Practical effects is one that we do right there in front of the camera. So like. sometimes if we need to blow a car up, we really need to blow a car up. We'll do it right there in front of the camera. But in this sound stage, we have. Hey, let me tell you about this. Hey, 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 and right now we're going to ask everybody to please remain seated, keep your arms and legs inside the vehicle at all times, secure any loose items because the earthquake is about to When you're filming a movie, you're using only one camera. In order to get all the shots that you need, you're going to have to film that same sequence over and over and over again from different angles. That way, the editors will have enough footage to put together to make one long dramatic sequence. And that, my friends, is the magic of the movies. Yeah, but, you know, after all that excitement, I think we're going to calm things down just a little bit. We're going to take you up to the east coast of the United States, all the way up to the resort community of Amity Island. Oh. Back in 1975, the residents of this sleepy seaside community that? were terrorized by a 25 foot long great white shark that they called Jaws. Oh, that looks so sick. Yeah, things are pretty quiet out there right now, but we have been told there's another shark out there. Oh, look at this. It looks like they caught it. Thank goodness. Oh, maybe not. Look out there. Oh, shit. I see a fin. Oh, that's close. We've got a police light out there. Oh, get out. One of those nifty shark fin cages. And he has to get into that shark fin cage. This is not good. Oh! Oh, I'm um, sorry, everybody. That's not what we want to say. Do it, do it, do it. Why did he say clear the area? No, we're not going to clear the area. We're going to move up in this direction. Take cover behind those high voltage boxes and these great big barrels of gasoline. Now, nothing just goes wrong, right? Oh, look at that. With that barrel out there, they must have made it a hook. They must have made it a hook. Ah! Okay, now, 
Donald, quiz time! Donald has put us in What type of shark is that? Thank you! It's a rubber shark! Oh. Good and one, Donald. You know what? The differences between this shark and the one we used in the movie Jaws, this one works. The one that we used in the movie didn't work very well. First thing that happened when they put the mechanical shark in the Atlantic Ocean, that shark sank to the bottom of the ocean. We actually had three mechanical sharks. They all formed in the same way. They all sank to the bottom of the ocean. There were so many problems making that movie. Well, people who worked on it started calling it Flaws instead of Jaws. That's a true story. Yeah, and the shark has a name. It's it's Steven so Spielberg's um, lawyer named Bruce Rayner. <laughs> and he still works for Steven Spielberg. If you look out there across the lake, um, this is not the set from Amity or from um, Jaws. This was actually a set from a TV series. You might recognize it. It's called Murder, She Wrote. It starred Angela Lansbury. Yeah, that was Cabot Cove, Maine. Oh, okay, that's my favorite movie. <laughs> It's my favorite show. Over here <laughs> off to the left side, you'll see a residential area. We call this area Elm Street. Come on, the um, house is a land street. We're talking about the back in 2006. The one house at the very end, that yellow house with the green roof, that was Boo Ratley's house in a movie called To Kill a Mockingbird. Then over here, off to the right side, Yo, we that big white yeah, house. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That yeah, is yeah, yeah. I'm freezing. Oh, the, the fire. Four houses in Texas starring Dolly Parker. Burt it was built inside soundstage number 12 and then moved out here to the back lot after the uh, production was finished. Goody! That is what we call a practical set. It has both an interior and an exterior design for filming. That house over there off to the left side, that is what we call a facade. It's just the front and the sides of the building has absolutely nothing inside it. The roadway that we are on right now, we call it Wilderness Road. It's actually Steven Spielberg Drive. But we call it Wilderness Road because we're pretty much out here in the woods. That is so if dumb. you look off to the left, they're so like Sharks. I, was, I was thinking about that too, though. Straight up, like, wasting grass. Yeah. Wasting time. Just for this tour, though, the amount of water that they use is crazy. Also, in the TV series, CSI, Crime Scene Investigation, when it was filming here on the Universal Lab, many times we had investigators were going into a wooded area outside of Las Vegas. It was really a wooded area over here. Okay, well, for those of you on the left side, you got your chance to see picture cars a little bit earlier. It's the chance for those of you on the right side now to have your camera. Oh, we can see cars. More picture cars. You may be wasting a bit of right. these. It's getting a little dark chat. Yeah, uh, the little school bus, if anybody knows what that's from, please tell me because I have the slightest idea. But right beside it, you can see um, Mr. Bean's little car over there. Mr. Bean's little Halloween. School bus. Uh, oh, Mr. Bean's. The, um, cars from the uh, Cars? 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 Oh, that one car is from Cars? Spice Girls. The, um, We've got a police car that was used in the Queen. The Smith's piano, which is um, a truck that was an old Ford that was used in Oak Brother for Art Bell. We have a uh, Bumblebee out there. You can see the yellow Camaro. Bumblebee, oh, yeah. Yeah. Wasting cars. Oh, um, I'm sorry to say we've come to the end. That's the part. That's the part. Yeah. Not our end. It was the end of Mary and Crane. Ah. Oh! She drove up that Ooh, scary! She stayed at this hotel over here. Oh but she never checked out. Scary! Uh, Look at that little house up there. <laughs> He's a real psycho. Yeah, yeah, she said The it. film that I'm talking about is a 1960 film, Ooh. Psycho, and that um, sign that you see out there, Bates Motel, that's the original yeah. Psycho, or from the original film, Psycho. As we approach the oh, Psycho oh, house, the house yeah, it's here on to the left side, you'll notice it is a little bit smaller than a regular house, and it is not a real house at all. It's something what we call a shell. Four walls and a roof. But if you look up uh -oh. in the second story window, you might see Mother is still rocking in her chair. Scary, I don't want to. Uh... Not only is it cold, but also... Oh, oh, she's rocking! Oh, oh this is scary. I hate this part. Okay, we're gonna stop now. We are coming to one of the biggest sets ever created for a motion picture. We are driving through the crash site set of Steven Spielberg's The War of the Worlds. Well, well, I, I was going to say that too. Wasting planes. 
this does strike me as a bit of a waste, to be honest, as far as it's Yeah, this is a real 747. Hassan caused this, chat. This is for the film and then torn to bits. Okay. It's a very clever set that is all designed around a vision of a student. We forget to sit down and talk about the world. I thought, what if the 747 goes down? Oh, yeah. Because it's, it's just something you don't see. You're doing good. Uh -huh. You can go back and pass me. Pass me out. That's not what you're closing your eyes, okay? Okay. Yeah, I'm closed. Oh, my God. I like how his heart's hard. Robbie, get in. Didn't he steal it? Get in. Come on, Robbie. Little brat. Yeah. Yeah. One of the most common questions things. our frequently asked questions about here at Universal is whether or not that's a real aircraft. It really was a real 747. It was purchased by Paramount Pictures. Whoa, they dropped it? They flew it here. <laughs> they flew it down here? In the Boave Desert. Um, it was no longer in use, obviously. They bought it for what the, um, the price of scrap metal would have gone for, which is about $60,000. Wow. That's not hey, that's how much you got to have Shroud come today, Lud. Yeah. to be removed. All four pieces Good were placed Thanks. on the flatbed trucks, and it was brought here to Universal in one night. Okay, take a look out there in the distance, off to the right. You can see a very large blue backdrop. That's one of the world's largest freestanding backdrops. And it's, it's sitting in front of a very large concrete basin that can be filled with water. We have wave makers and wind machines, and it looks like an open body of water. Here you can see how it was used as a swamp in the film Psycho. But... That the backdrop so was weird. painted to look like the sky. We didn't have wow. computer-generated imagery back then. Also, that's Sam Neill in the films um, Jurassic Park 3 and the Spinosaurus, the movie oh. the Hulk. Splashdown sequence in Apollo 13 took place out there, and there you see Tom Hanks again, only this is from the movie Sully. This is really I interesting, knew it was everybody. Fake. The um, <laughs> airplane that you saw out there, that was a real airplane, and it was floating in the water, and um, the people, the escape slides, the water, everything was real except for what you saw in the distance. The um, the cityscape was put in using computer-generated oh, imagery. Sullivan. Okay, now I know you're okay, wondering you might in here too, Sullivan's chat. garage over here. I always carry with me my um, company phone, and I get text messages from our command center. One of those messages said that um, there has been some criminal activity going Fast and Furious <laughs> Seven <laughs> Charge, <laughs> the grand finale of the Universal Studios yeah, Tour. We are now heading back to the theme park, everybody. Um, there was some pretty wild driving on the uh, on our um, driver's staff over here. Everybody give Gerald a great big round of applause over here. Good job, Gerald! ceases to amaze me how our drivers find these open highways out there in Los Angeles when I always seem to be stuck in bumper-to-bumper -bumper traffic, you know? Um, for those of you who loved the movie Sing, Sing 2, a new Universal Illumination Entertainment production will be in theaters at Christmas time. As we head on into the park, if you haven't joined us for our newest ride, Secret Life of Pets, also by Illumination Entertainment, go ahead and head on over to Secret Life of Pets off the leash or off the leash spectacular entertainment for those of you who are um, annual pass holders we enjoyed having you on board for those of you who are not annual pass holders you might want to take today's ticket over to the box office and upgrade to an annual pass ah. and finally on behalf of everybody here at Universal Studios we'd like to thank you for taking the world famous studio well, tour it's new? been my pleasure being your chair again my name some is tough situations. Oh. I, don't, I didn't like that okay everybody as you exit please 
watch your step. If you I saw I trust this girl. Firmly by the hand like place your 3D you put glasses in the Island. Island. And you Not good. right over here off to the left hand side. It was great seeing you everybody. Have a wonderful evening here at Universal Studios Hollywood, the entertainment capital of LA. Good tour. I love Dude, dude, the Fast and the Furious ride was the sickest. I can't believe Chad missed it. Chad dude. missed it. That was the sickest thing I've ever seen. Yeah, 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 yeah. Chad's oh. not allowed. They're not family. It's about family, Chad. <laughs> <laughs> they, they say the big of the family. What? It's about drive. It's about passion. It's about action. Uh, I want some arcade shit that I like a little bit before we go home. Chat, we're gonna do some arcade shit before we go home. Hey, did you enjoy the tour? Yeah, good job, Donald. Very well today. Thank you very much. You nailed it. Oh, that, was, that was incredible. Well, thank you. Donald. 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 Chat loves Donald, actually. Are we allowed to get tip or not? Thank you for a hundred thousand people. Thank you for all you want to stay very much for your time. Thanks for uh, entertaining uh, us. <laughs> what a guy. We really appreciate it. Um, you're really incredible. And I hope we went to uh, Instagram. We did get you all down with the